World Wide website. This is Hack the Dino. I'm Ben. That's Dan. This is Greenlight Comics. And we're filming this early because by the time you are watching this with your eyes, taking in the image, it flipping upside down in your retina and then your brain processing it, I'll be in Japan, which is another country. I'll be here. You'll be here? Yeah, I'll just be at my shop doing so the same thing I do every day. There's a launch party next Friday when you're watching this. When you watch this, go to Greenlight and uh, hang out with Dan. Because he'll be here by himself. Crying. And I'll be in Japan. Crying. Anyway, uh, <laughs> being that this is an early show and we're filming early uh, of this episode 54 of Hack the Diner. Ooh. Uh, we're not going to lean too much on the news because it's all going to be horribly outdated by the time you see this. Oh, yeah. And that makes our hits suffer. And we don't want to make our hits suffer. We love our hits. We like to nurture them and, and hug them and kiss them and let them grow strong into big, strong kids. So they can go around the schoolyard and not be bullies and, and live in a peaceful world where... I don't know where I'm going with this, Dan. Feel free to jump in any time. Hits. <laughs> so what have you been playing lately, Dan? Um, what have I been playing? I've been playing... Um, what was it called? It's uh, called We Happy Few. Ah, I, I did a... Um, your stream. Yeah, yeah. I did, a, I did a live stream of it via Twitch and YouTube. And if uh, anyone wants to watch me playing it um, for three and a half hours... Uh, they can log into our YouTube or our Twitch channel. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you sit there for three and a half hours and just play and, one game. And talk. Yeah. yeah. Play, talk, and eat chocolate and drink coffee. Well, um, I, your... I have a coffee right there with me every time. What were your thoughts of We Happy Few? We Happy Few, in my opinion, was not a, the best game to stream. So you um, were one of the few who weren't happy. Yeah, I was one of the, the few that weren't happy. Um, like The game itself was fine-ish. It was just really a slow story-based game where it, it, it's like a first-person shooter where you have combat and stuff. Except I played it for three and a half hours and I probably killed eight people in the whole three and a half hours. Really? But were, were you playing it like a proper person or were you just going, no, I'm going to punch everyone in the face? No, no, I was, I was trying to be... I, it's really weird. Like, so it's a game. It's a first-person shooter. Which it's has, a game? Yeah. Holy that, smokes, you heard it here first, folks. I know. That has weapons, right? Breaking news. So all you can do is you have weapons. And then the whole point of the game is to not kill anyone. Really? Okay. Yeah, it's kind of like, like choke people out and, and don't be the bad guy that kills people. Don't revert to being the bad kind of person. That's boring. Hmm. You want to be the bad person. Yeah, in the end, I just... Um, I, so I started choking dudes out and, you know, donking them with things that didn't really hurt them that much. Donk. Donk. <laughs> but by the end of it... When Are I was, you a comic book? Well, by the end, when I was getting tired, sharpened st- stick. Sticked. I got a sharpened stick and I was just stabbing dudes. Oh, really? Yeah, it was pretty funny. And um, <laughs> Stabbing dudes. Yeah, Classic. but um, I, I reckon it's just... It, it's not that it's a bad game. It's just not a good game to stream, if you know what I mean. So there's long bits where you're just walking around... Fetch quests, Ugh. just like listening to like he- there's heaps to read, heaps of dialogue, like like, and then to me like you need stream games need to be exciting or yeah. I find my best stream games are the ones that are like si- sideways scrollers seem to be uh, yeah the best yeah. yeah well, so what are you 2. streaming? Five D. What are you streaming uh, this weekend, which is in your past? So you can watch it right now. So you can watch it right now. Head over to uh, twitch.tv backslash hack the dino or on this very channel. But be sure to hit that subscribe button. I think somewhere. I think I'm going to do Mega Man 11. Sweet. No, I have done Mega Man 11. <laughs> Please go over and have a look at it. How was it, Dan? Oh, it was fantabulo Actually, I can interject there because Mega Man, the Mega Man 11 demo is something that I've been playing recently. Um, and yeah, it, it's pretty good. It's none of this mighty number no. 9 malarkey. Uh, malarkey? This is, this is a crisp platformer. It feels good. It, it's, it feels tight. Uh, it's just really well polished. Um, and it feels like a Mega Man game. I think it's 2.5D. I'm going to cheat, though. I'm going to look up the list of what order you have to do them in. Oh, don't. <laughs> Dude, who wants to watch someone streaming something and then just go, no, nah, that's not the right level. No, nah, that's not the right level. People like it when they're watching someone stream and that person fail because nah. it makes them feel good. No, nah, no. Nah. It'll just be like hours. Eight, eight hour stream. <laughs> going, oh, damn it. Damn it, damn it. No, I never have to go back. And then you'd have to go back and replay the level. No one wants to see that. All right. Um, I've also, well, I wanted to play, but the demo hadn't finished downloading by the time I came here today. Um, the Fist of the North Star demo is out, Ooh, made yeah. by the same company that did Yakuza. Oh, nice. Is that, I think? Maybe. I'll oh, fact check it. Fact yeah, check, fact check, check that. Fact check, fact check. Fact check that. Um, um, but, yeah, 
Dan, you're pretty excited about that one. Yeah, yeah, I'm he's excited. I love Fist of the North Star. Like the original OG, um, I never read the books. Like I would like to, but it's I just haven't. a super powerful dude, right? Super powerful. Yeah, yeah but anime like they, dude. they took the idea of muscly men and just went, and then just went like, okay, this is where we are at this point in time with muscly men, and let's take it up to a hundred. And it's so ridiculous. Like the main character when he comes out at the start, he just slowly, you know, walks through the desert, and then a building falls out in front of him, and he just slowly walks through the the concrete building. Yes. Yes. What's oh, yes? that's right. It was made by the same company that did uh, y- all the Yakuza games. All right, so it's going to look great. Hopefully it's violent, because the main point of that whole thing uh, is it's violent. From what I've seen, it's pretty violent. But there's game. been some <laughs> Fist of the North Star games that recently that just haven't been that violent. Like and on I'm the like, NES. I've got the Fist of the North Star game on my gold NES fanny comp. I haven't played it, but whew, that's a perler. <laughs> But yeah, um, there was one recently. Why am I saying so many Australian That's slang words? R- Malarkey, Pearl. I reckon I said one last show as well. Stop it. It's disgusting, yeah, you did. Ben. Chuck a shrimp on the Holden. Yeah, what did you say? <laughs> a hand shandy was the last shandy. one. That's the hand shandy, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry, what were you saying? I wasn't. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, incidentally, Yakuza is the PS uh, Plus free game for November. They've just announced that. Which one? Uh, the remake of number one. K- 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 Konami? Kiwami. K- Kiwami. Kiwami. Man, I paid good money for that. <laughs> no, no, it's not zero. It's Kiwami 2, which is the remake of one or something like that. Anyway, yeah. it's the remake of number it's one. so confusing. No, Kiwami 1 is the remake of one. Kuzo Zero is a prequel remake. Right. And there's something else. Kiwami is just the remake of number one. Yeah. And if it's that one, it's just like, damn, I pay for that. <laughs> See, this is why you never pay for anything. True. Uh, and then, yeah, I've just been chipping away at uh, Spider-Man and uh, the old Shh. Fortnite. It's what, pretty cool. What enemies have you come across in Spider-Man? Uh, is that a spoiler? Lots of thugs. Um, kind Thug- of? Thugs. Oh, okay. Is that a spoiler? Yeah. I just got the part where uh, Martin Lee was semi-revealed. Ah, yes. What, um, what's your favourite suit that you use the most? Oh, I'm just using Scarlet. Just the whole time? Just the whole time. <laughs> Scarlet. It's Ben Riley. Ben Riley time. Dan's dying. It's I'm okay. Joking. I'll continue even if he's turning blue. Ben, <laughs> Ben's got your back. Uh, yeah. So uh, when I finally unlock uh, McGill O'Hara's Spider-Man suit, I might switch to that. Which one's that one? Uh, Spider-Man 2099. Yes. Because he's Yuck. a violent man. Yeah. He is a violent, violent person. So does their suits represent their personality? No, it's Peter. You it just still, change your shoes. It doesn't change yeah. your shoes. But you, you, get, you, you get different abilities <laughs> over each suit, don't you? You get different abilities when you unlock the suit, but then you can map those abilities onto any suit you want. Yeah, yeah. So, so what's your great. ability that you map? Uh, I'm just using the web bloom, where he, yeah. like, he jumps up and does a three, couple of 360s shooting webs and just takes out everyone. All yeah. I used all game. Yep. Yep. It's the only way. No, uh, you know, I don't want to... Tactics? Actually play it correctly. I'm nah. starting to get better at the brawling though. I can like jump onto the side of a, uh, jump out of the, way, flip out of the way of a shot, jump on the side of a building, swing, flip behind him, and whip him, and then pull him out. Yeah. So I'm getting pretty good at that. Perfect. Cool. And I like doing that. Anyway, we were heading to the new segment. Uh, not a lot, but some pretty big stuff has been revealed in the past two days. Remember, we're recording this. What's the date today? The fifth in of October. A week. <laughs> so, uh, yesterday I happened to be on ye olde internet when this news broke, but Nintendo have announced they're developing a new model of the Nintendo Switch, slated to be released in the uh, second half of 2019. Uh, not a lot's been revealed about it, besides it's, uh, they might replace the LCD screen, and uh, it's going to be a new hardware model. Uh, so, so it's just, it's just like a... A Switch Up, Plus. Upgrade, yeah. Yeah, like the 2DS and the 3DS. I was going to say, the million DSs that exist. Yeah, um, and that's what someone said uh, on one of the forums. Right, here um, we go, here we go. <laughs> and they said, oh, oh, why am I spending my money, blah, blah, blah. What, uh, do they expect me to buy two Switches? I said, well, how many DSs do you own? Yeah, all right, fair enough. So they are taking everything that worked with every other previous... Uh, Home console and handheld console and just wrapping it all up together in the Switch. Um, big surprise, I'm getting one. <laughs> really? Yep. 
Nah, I'm going to stick with my My OG. girlfriend wants to get a Switch as well. Oh. So we're going to have three Switches and the new Switch as well. I was going to say, I might consider it. just depends on how much change there is. Um, well, see, I got excited yeah. and because I thought that maybe this might be them leveling up, getting ready for the next generation, which is pretty much going to come 2019, 2020. Yeah. Scarlet's already been announced to be in production, which is Xbox's next yeah. big console, Gen 5 console. Uh, Gen 5? Oh, Doesn't matter. Whatever. Uh, and PlayStation 5 uh, has dev kits out in the wild, apparently. Um, so, you know, they're gearing up for a, probably a 2020. I reckon Death Stranding is going to be a launch title on that bad boy. Surely. Um, so it had me thinking, well, maybe Switch, uh, well, Nintendo are developing a Switch in order to keep up. And they're upping the hardware in order to play some of these next-gen games that are going to come to these consoles. Uh, however, I did have it pointed out to me on one of the pages uh, that um, it probably isn't the case because uh, NVIDIA, which uh, developed the Shield technology that is in uh, the Switch, probably pumped a lot of money into that development. Uh, it was made specifically for Switch, Oof. and uh, they probably haven't seen a return on that yet. So they're not yeah. going to invest in the next level of hardware yeah. if they haven't seen a return on their if, previous. If the, the new consoles, they come out, within a year or whatever you're saying, um, like, and if they are a, a jump forward in in graphics and, and hardware and stuff like that, yep. Nintendo's going to get left behind again in that game. I think Nintendo's sort of okay with that, though. I don't think they're trying to be the uh, big big boys anymore. I think they're happy to be that second console. Like They're, they're fully aware I that you're going to get an Xbox or you're going to get a PlayStation or you're going to get a PC. They're fine with that. But if you can be the second one that they get... <laughs> then they're yeah, all right, right with that. Yeah. Well, they're making a heap of money with the Switch. Oh, yeah. Like they are all about making money. Well, and, yeah. <laughs> and not creating great games. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Zelda? Yeah, the one example. What do you think of Mario? It was rubbish. What did, you're an idiot. It uh, really was. It, it was just another one of those Mario games. I was like, oh, okay. It's just, what did you think of Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze? I played it for like 40 minutes. No, you didn't. You were playing it a lot. We've got the uh, footage on the show. You were talking about it. You are singing its praises. You were in love with it. You were going to marry it, I remember. I had the rings all picked out. You were going to wear a lovely Donkey Kong I gave dress. It, I gave it three sessions in Dan, r- uh, telling Donkey the truth. Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze sitting in a tree. Um, yeah. Kissing no, no. That, I don't know. They just haven't. I mean, Octopath Traveler is probably the one I play the most, but... I don't know. They just haven't seemed to have got any games that really... The big, cool ones... You uh, bought Wonder Boy 3 on there? Yeah, I bought it on everything, though. <laughs> lots of, <laughs> there are lots of games on there, um, especially the indie section is exploding at the moment. Uh, sh- uh, not Shovel Knight. Well, Shovel Knight is on there, but Hollow Knight is on there. But all those games are just on every console. Well, Hollow Knight will be soon because they got their physical release coming out very, very soon. Team Cherry, good on you. Yous. Hope to have you back soon. Yous. Sitting here between us. Yous. Being all lovely. Um, and then announced today as well, Nintendo have possibly, uh, well, not leaked, but it's been, they filed a patent for a Game Boy phone case that plays Game Boy games. Now, this is interesting. Yeah, in the patent, in the file patent, I've got to know. Oh, the case, was it? Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> of the key features of this Game Boy casing is the ability for inputs on buttons on the casing to be sensed by the touchscreen beneath the buttons. What? So, I... I think what they're saying is that you'd have your mobile phone here. Yes. And you play it like that. And then that. the case is there. Yes. And you'd flip it around. Yes. And play it like that. And it would detect it through the screen and run. Well, no, I think there'd be a separate touch screen underneath the casing. Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah. I mean, well, that's... Uh, they could fit every Game Boy game onto, like, yeah. A, yeah. a drop of water anyway. Um, and that might be the new classic. Yeah. Like, I mean, I'd much rather a standalone... Game Boy brick with every single Game Boy game on there. I was going to say, because... They're, they're, never, they're never going to do that, though. Would it well, only be for certain phone models? No, that oh, I can't them. imagine. Just uh, I did remember reading they said something about it being available for iPads as well, so whether... They all use the same uh, inputs be at the bottom, so... Yeah. Well, I don't think you'd play it on the game. Well, I think, I I think it'd be its own thing. You reckon? Yeah. Could, what, it, it could, it's, it's an LCD yeah. screen that could run like for a thousand years on a lithium battery. Yeah. No, you might be right. Anyway, it's just a patent. They yeah. file heaps of patent. This is no guarantee this is actually a thing, but pretty cool nonetheless. It's also not LCD screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, got, a, got a title for you coming out of uh, the old game world. It's called 
Harry Potter and the leaked RPG footage. <laughs> I love that game. In this classic... Uh, a Luke. gentleman didn't sign the NDA when he was invited to a game debriefing and took secret footage of a Harry Potter RPG so <laughs> and just then walked out before he could get caught and Crazy. uploaded it. Um, so he just didn't sign it. and that, He just didn't sign fine. the NDA. And he's fine. Yeah, they can't legally come after him. That's crazy. Uh, yeah. How could they flop that so hard? I don't know, but someone got fired. Got what, but what if you just, um, what if you just sign y- your name as someone else? Uh, the intent. So ah. if the intent's there, it's still somewhat yeah. binding. Um, but uh, yeah, so you got footage. That it looks pretty cool. It's set in the 1800s, which apparently is before Dumbledore was born. Uh, so I like that. Yep. Just another Fantastic section. Fantastic Beasts is early 1900s. When, so when Dumbledore that. was Jude Law. Yes. Yeah. Yes. With an excellent beard. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very suave gentleman, isn't oh. he? Oh. Oh. Um, he really aged. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Han Solo He aged horribly Yeah, yeah. Real quick <laughs> Yeah Jeez uh, So yeah there you go uh, It's from the Avalanche Software Company And they did all the Disney Infinity games uh, I'm hoping it's a lot better Because I don't know if you played Disney Infinity yeah. But that game was glitchy as hell Disney Infinity is just made for people to make YouTube videos Out of for ch- young children to watch Yeah And to collect every one they could of the toys Those toys were awesome though like, oh, I love such the design. wonderful design. But they bombed, didn't they? Like, are they even? They still sell? Uh, no, uh, no, 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 it got canned. Those canned. Toys to Life got canned eh, a couple of years back. Um, but uh, I was playing one of the games as Spider Man, and I completed the mission. But the game didn't recognise that I completed the mission, oh, so geez. I was just stopped. No, I like just couldn't progress. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, that was the end. Yeah. 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 Um, so after that, I went. Oh, I'm not playing this anymore. That's, That's it. the worst Done. glitch in a game when it doesn't like it happened in Fallout for a couple of my missions. Like you just. It just didn't recognise that it goes like, go get the thing and put it here. So you put it there and do it and it's just like, that's it. It didn't yeah. recognise it and I can't get it out and I can't get it. So you have to one. restart yeah. the whole mission? Well, no, you, you can't. That's yeah. just it. Oh, really? You just have to stop that mission and just do something else. Yeah, you just commit And you to hope it. it's not uh. the main storyline. <laughs> and then that thing is just going to be sitting there for the whole game going unfinished. <laughs> yeah. Until they patch it out. Yeah. Which, no, but there's so many games where like they've got super like bug trophies and people are furious because they can't 100% it. Oh, sorry, Greg Miller. <laughs> uh, coming out this month, October 10th, on Nesflix. That's right, Nesflix. I like. Where you can get all your NES games on Nintendo Online with Nesflix. Uh, Solomon's Key, Golf, yes. and Dodgeball. <laughs> uh, begs the question, as uh, you may have noticed, I'm a little bit of a Nintendo fan. You may have noticed I'm a little bit of a not one. What the <laughs> hell are they doing? <laughs> yeah, what are, what are those games? You've just launched this online thing. Why are you bringing out the trash? <laughs> like, think of all the... Like, I would have liked if Tetris was in there. Boom. Man. Yes. Excellent. Very happy with Tetris, that. Tetris, Tetris. Yeah. But, like, the, 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 they've got three games, and they're just three nothing games. I don't know. Solomon's Key. <laughs> I never played Solomon's Key, and that should be enough. That's a reason, yeah. Uh, and, Golf's and Golf. Right. Uh, what do you do? Incidentally, I played uh, River City Rampage. On uh, Switch Online the other night, man, what a cool game that is! That's Ross's favorite game. It is so good. It's really like so much better than the Double Dra- uh, Double Dragon. Yeah, Double Dragon. That's on there. Yeah, so River- much better. And it's basically River River City Rampage is basically like what uh, Scott Pilgrim cloned. That the Scott, yeah, the Scott Pilgrim. And game. that was an excellent mm. game, which you can't get anymore. Really? Yeah, they had to take it off all the uh, stores because of rights. Oh, I've got oh, that. that sucks. Yeah, so do I on my 360, which my nephew has. Uh oh! Hope oh, he doesn't no. screw up my Xbox. He will. Yeah, I know he will. It's gone forever now. <laughs> and finally, Capcom is assessing as to uh, if cloud-based gaming for the Switch is a viable option. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say, in Australia, no. <laughs> for our American listeners and all our listeners uh, in other places, like I think we got some in Germany and some in the Philippines. Nice. Hi guys. Um, Australia has horrible internet. Like, archaic, 75th in the world, awful internet. Um, so it, I don't think we can... St- we, we barely can stream Netflix, let yeah. alone... Um, like, if you're playing Fortnite, you have to play people within your region because everyone else will just uh, lag... Well, you'll lag behind everyone else and it's, it's almost unplayable. Um, so that goes away from my point. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, Australia, I mean, boo! I, yeah. <laughs> in Japan, they've got Assassin's Creed Odyssey streaming. They've got Resident Evil 6 streaming, Damn. all on the Switch. Um, Japan's internet's not very good, though, either. Isn't it? Nah. Because it's so 
clustered? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Who's got the best internet? Um, it'll fully be somewhere Frederick like... Frederick Internet. It'll fully be like a... It's got a top hat and a monocle and a, a beard made of wires. It'll be a third world country. Yeah. Yeah. Something weird that you'd feel like, yep, well... They've got full crazy optic fibre, everything amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Their, their whole country has spent all you their money... you got pretty good internet, though. Right? Yeah, yeah, I got heaps good internet. I can definitely watch Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> You can stream that uh, yeah, Super Mario Brothers. I can stream my Pixel games. <laughs> <laughs> so why can't you stream the AAA games yet? My uh, computer isn't fast enough to deal with it. Right. So it's not my internet, it's my computer. So. I will upgrade it eventually. So if you want Dan to play some AAA games, maybe head over to patreon.com backslash hack the dino. Segway. And become, thank you, become a Patreon supporter for as little as a dollar a month. That's less then a monster in my pocket <laughs> on uh, on eBay because they're about a dollar thirty. Dollar thirty in my pocket. Dollar <laughs> thirty in my pocket. You can support us here at Hack the Dino and get things such as a pre-show and a post-show and exclusive content like Dan's little segment he does with me, where he tries to sell me a comic. It's the best. I'm so good at it. <laughs> I don't think I've bought one comic. I think you did one of them. You were like, yep. All right. Was that because it was Yusagi Yojimbo? That might have been. I was always going to buy that. It's Yusagi Yojimbo. Uh, then there you've got the $3 a month tier where you can have the podcast version of Hack the Dino More, which is Brayden, Dan, and myself sitting down. To, I said, and myself. Oh, that's incorrect English, by the way. If you're mentioning other people, it's just one. So Brayden, Dan, and I, or me. Not myself, because you're not by yourself. There's other people there. Grammar. Podcast. Podcast. $3 a month. <laughs> we talk about interesting stuff. like Not grammar. Not grammar. <laughs> Although this month. Uh, last uh, month, you were in Tasmania, so uh, we talked about the Venom movie. Yeah, we and had a real guest. It, it appears that uh, Alex and I were correct. And Yo. that movie was going to be a steaming pile of symbiote poo. Yeah. Oh, it's great. Like a turd in the wind. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, and then for $10 a month, you get the producer level, which is everything. You get a special shout out each episode, which Braden's put right here. Woo. And something else that's coming up very, very soon that I think all $10 a month tier supporters will be very, very happy with. Uh, and moving forward as well, we're going to actually. Uh, uh, we're going to put ourselves up for auction. <laughs> what? Um, well, moving forward, you can actually uh, donate and get a guest spot on Hack the Dino. So you can come in here, you can sit between Dan and I, and you can uh, talk about all the things you want to talk about. Say your opinions. And Dan can call you ugly and oh, everything else he does to me because he's a horrible man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> come pay us to do that. God damn it. Speaking of horrible men, King Kaiju Collectibles. <laughs> Oh. Is the biggest horrible man because he likes horrible monsters. And by horrible, I mean good. In the cool sense. Yeah, nice. that's what the kids say. If you like things like this, that's a kaiju. It's a, it's a man in a suit. That's another kaiju over there. Then head on over to Greenlight Comics. Have a look at the big glass cabinets. Go, wow, they're pretty cool. There's some old Nintendo games in there. I might buy them. Or there's a really cool Ultraman just standing there, fist pumping the world. King Kaiju Collectibles. Look him up on the Instagram and all the other Facebook places and give him your money after you've given us Patreon money. <laughs> anyway, topic of the show. Topic of the show. Dan! Show. We were at a, uh, a toy, toy fair. comic the fair. Com the comic and toy fair at the CBC College. Mm. Christian Boys College on the weekend. Uh, you were there selling your Yeah, Greenlight Comics, comics at a stall there. I was there helping King Kaiju and selling some of my secondhand junk. So, and selling some of my comics as well. I sold one. So if you don't know what it is, uh, the comic and toy fair is like a big basically trash and treasure for nerdy stuff really. Comic, oh, it's more of comic, a swap meet type thing. Yeah, yeah. Comics, toys, um, video game stuff. And then there's groups there. There's local artists. It was a great day. It's yeah. a, such a great event. And it costs like two bucks to get in. And there's thousands of people came. Hmm. Um, so one of the beauties of being stall holders is that uh, we get in before everyone else yeah. to set up. Uh, I have a friend who collects Super Nintendo games, and he was coming. He goes, oh, I can't wait to get there and hopefully get some really cheap Super Nintendo games. And I just looked at him and went... You do realise I'll be there before the doors are open, right? <laughs> and he just went, ah. Oh. 
But it, anyway. But you might have had them already. Yeah, no, I might have missed something. There was an Xbox One X there that I missed. And when I asked them how much they wanted for it, they went, nah. <laughs> no. What do they want? They wanted 200 for it. How much are they worth? Uh, about that. I would have grabbed it for about 50 bucks. Because I'm tight. Uh, but what did you get, Dan? Um, I got an Astromech droid, which I've got here. Now, you've got a few of them around your house in your studio. I do. Why Why them? Why um, the Astromech droids? I have... So, I just decided to start collecting Astromech droids. So, my rule is, Astromech droids obviously are from Star Wars. And they're... You say, like, you know, R2... Everyone knows R2-D2. It's all those kind of R2 droids. R2-who? Sorry? R2-D2. I'm mm. not familiar with, with this. So... And I, do you know what size those Star Wars are called? Like what? There's a certain size for what they're called, like a, a scale. Anyhow, I cut the normal size astromech droids. And I didn't realise what I was getting into at first, but... Why did you start collecting them? Because um, I just really liked them. And I saw those different coloured ones and I was always interested in them as a kid. So I was like, oh, I really want to, you know, get, get, get all of them. Thinking there's probably at least about 20 of them. Yeah. There's about 20... Come out every couple of months. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, like because artists do them. Um, they're designer ones, and, and then Disney has just opened up Builder Droid, so you can go to Disneyland and they will have like um, giant tubs of all the bits of astronaut droids, like the legs, the heads, the arms of all the sorts, the R R two, the R three, the R four, the R fives, up to R eights and stuff, all the sorts of stuff, and all weird ones, and you can piece together your own one. So now there is unlimited amounts of these things. <laughs> I like, was collecting them going down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I've, I've only got like about probably around 60. Um, yeah, right. I've got a bunch of them on cards and stuff. They're all worth different amounts. Like Some of them you'll get for seven bucks. Some of them are like 400 bucks. Well, you got a bootleg one that you showed in, during Hack the Dino More. Yeah, yes. yeah. So I, got, I got a bootleg one um, that was created by a toy maker. No, his name's just... Uh, I've just lost his name now. His name's Rudiger. Um, yeah, and he's Rudiger a, the Astromech Man. And he um, look him up, give him a like. That's not his name, uh, Rudiger. Yeah, I got like it, so. What was it? It was like a Russian. It was like a Russian R two D two, and it was like red and that. Yeah, he had a hammer and it. sickle, and hammer and sickle on it, like a, a medal. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah medal right. and stuff like that. Um, he had a bottle full of poison that he sprays. No, he didn't. Mm. But you can the the, the Astromech I want the Political. most. The Astromech I want the most is like there was a. Um, it's like a pink one. It's um, R R D Q Q T. I think it is. Oh, it's Q T. So like and oh. yeah, but it was it was made because there was this uh, person who you know uh, daughter got uh, cancer. And, oh, I feel uh, bad for mocking it now. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not going to go through all the details of it, but yeah, it's one I always want. But it's it's always so expensive, and I, I always look out for it. And um, I do have like one version of it. They did a, a cheaper version later on. I've got that one in like a pack. But yeah, but yeah, I love them, and I'm hoping I'll. Try and get some footage, you know, show it behind me. Yeah. <laughs> Something of it. Uh, of my collection. Of your collection. Uh, funny you said that you didn't know what you were getting into. Um, I was similar like that when I decided I'd start collecting Game Boys. Because I thought, oh, yeah, Game, Game Boys. Boys. Yeah, there's a few of them. But Here's the thing about Game Boys and Nintendo liking to make money. <laughs> in Japan, they have specific Game Boys that only come out in specific stores, in specific pre, uh, regions, prefecture, yeah, prefectures, yeah, uh, that you can't get anywhere else, and they have ones that like there's Target ones, there's Tommy Hilfinger ones, <laughs> Hilfinger ones, yeah, Hil- Hilfinger, well, whatever, Hilfinger, I don't know fashion, <laughs> clearly, uh, they, they, <laughs> I mean, one that I do have is the one they bought out, the Aussie, Aussie, Aussie one for the 2000 Olympics in Sydney, uh, oi, oi, oi. which is rare everywhere. What does it look like? It's green and gold, oh. funnily enough. Uh, I had one for sale. Someone bought it at the weekend. Um, but, uh, yeah, ridiculous. I don't know why I decided I'd start collecting Game Boys. I've realised I will never complete that at all. Because they're just going to keep making them. They're just going to keep making them. And, and, the thing we, is, and these are OG Game Boys you're talking about? Or is any like kind color? of Game Boy. Oh, Game, Boy okay. Game Boy Advance. I got Game this Boy. really cool uh, DS one with Goku on the front uh, the other day that was on, uh, on the marketplace that just happened to pop up. Uh, and when I posted it on my uh, personal Instagram, my retro hunting Instagram, I had two or three people go, oh, you were the one who got it. <laughs> oh, really? So it's yeah. an actual Goku one, isn't it? Just, 
I thought they just had a sticker on No, it. no, that's an actual Goku one. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's pretty rad. Uh, and I have an Olivia Newton-John DS. Do you? <laughs> sure. <laughs> it was a, a rose gold DS and uh, it came out for Mother's Day. My God. And that was given to me by someone at, uh, where I train. How's the, 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 the bombasticness of that? It's like for Mother's Day, but not only is it a Mother's Day, it's specifically for mums who only like Olivia Newton-John. So and you, rose gold. You, it's like... Bringing it down so well, that's the like, thing. Like, like, they like have, narrow. They have Game Boys, like Game Boy Colors of Pokemon, which are only available in like the Osaka Pokemon Center. And that's yeah. the only place you can get it, or the only place you could get it when it was out. Um, it's stupid rare, uh, the, the, some of the games. There's the rarest Game Boy, I think, available. There was one made, um, and it's Ooh. a Game Boy Color uh, with Link from Ocarina of Time on it. And what it was, someone who was working in the Game Boy factory decided it. he'd make himself one. What? Because yeah. he like, yeah, they were just so customizable. Like, yeah. The machine. So he made himself a Game Boy with Link on it. And Pro- I think it's clear black with Link standing there with his shield. Uh, and like, it's the only one in existence. That's insane. He's probably, he probably thought nothing of it as well. He probably wasn't doing it to make money. He probably thought, oh, I'll just make one yeah. for myself. I yeah. like that. Yeah. All right, the clear ones are there. I've got them there. Like, yeah. It was just a fluke. But there's some there's only been five made because they, they give them away for... Like Pokemon ones are obviously the rarest ones because they give them away for world championships. So you have Pokemon DSs and there was only five of them made. Or uh, there's another one which, like, some of them are ugly as hell. They've they've got ones that are covered in sequins, like pink sequins. Oh, I do like a bejeweled. Oh, it's awful. But they've got DSs like that as well. Uh, But then there's some really, really cool ones. Um, One of the ones I really love is a Game Boy Pocket, but with the original Game Boy uh, colors. Yeah. Pink buttons and the. Uh, Grey, awesome. Game Boys are awesome. What's the um? What's the most expensive one you've seen? Like, as in, like price wise? Uh, well, when King Kaiju was over in Japan last time, he came across a box Game Boy SP that was red and had Charizard on the top. Yep. And it's you know it, it's a Japan exclusive, so it's rare but not the rarest. And that I think was about three hundred and fifty Australian dollars. Mm. I thought about it. A guy I know in Japan about has uh, one of 600 Donkey Kong Game Boy SPs. There was only 600 made, uh, and he wants $600 for that. So, I'm so not they're not in that. the thousands yet. Not those ones. But, I mean, the way the retro game market's going, yeah, you know, you, nah, you're getting it's gonna, close. It's plunge. I, fingers crossed, <laughs> because that's good for me. Not so good for King Kaiju collectibles. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you can go and buy all your retro gaming You've needs. You've done the ad already. <laughs> well, whoops. Um, right, yeah, so speaking of collecting, I also picked up some things uh, on the weekend. What did you get? I got... Uh, so a gentleman who I know through uh, one of the toy sites that I frequent, uh, he was friends with the Nintendo rep in Australia uh, when there was only one of them. Yep. So he got all this promotional stuff, and he was just clearing out uh, all his old stuff and gave it to me at a very good price because he knew I was a collector. Uh, first thing I got was these sticker sheets. Hold it, sure. You'll hold it. I'm sure Braden will get a picture of them afterwards yeah. and we'll put them up on the screen. Uh, so for those of you listening to the podcast... <laughs> we'll explain these in <laughs> explain ultimate detail. Um, so they're Banjo-Kazooie stickers uh, from Nintendo 64 and there's uh, three pictures of Banjo and his girlfriend, uh, the Nintendo 64 emblem and the little Sky guy called Mumbo Jumbo or something like that. Yeah, right. He went... What's the origin of this sticker sheet, you reckon? Is it just uh, from, like, I anywhere? Think it, I think it was just promo stuff. How much was this? Oh, I can't remember. <laughs> I've got six sheets of them. I can't remember how much it was. Are they all the same? <laughs> yeah, they're all the same. Oh, my God. Uh, and then King Kai just saw it and goes, oh, can I have one? And I went, no. Nah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh, second thing I got, which is pretty cool, uh, was this booklet. Now, I'll hold oh, it. You want to hold it? I can do oh. it. Uh, this booklet. Now, it may not look like much, but it's actually from E3 2003. So it came all the way from the States. It's a catalogue. I assume. It's a catalogue that they obviously gave out in the Nintendo booth in 2003. And that being the year, it's all about the GameCube, which I think is a very underrated system. Yeah. Like, the GameCube was great. It had some awesome games on there. Uh, so it's just, just going through. Oh, it's got Metal Gear Solid, Twin Snakes. Nice. Or Resident Evil 4. Nice. Mm, that was really good in the GameCube. This is pretty good, actually. Uh, it's a good book. They have there as well all the... Oh, that's, that's what I want to show. Give that back. Oh. <laughs> they uh, have all the accessories you could have got with the GameCube, obviously, because they were trying to sell it. And I was showing Dan before the show the uh, HD cables worth about $150. Ooh. 
Oof. Because of the uh, low run. Damn, of the low run of cables. Well, GameCube wasn't that successful. It was, I think, until the Wii U, the worst selling console behind the Virtual Boy. Oof. From memory. Oof. Wii they U. They had the e-reader. Uh, Game Boy Advance with the e-reader, with the cards you could swipe through. If you're looking for some of those cards, King Kaiju Collectibles has a... <laughs> Stop <laughs> advertising him. <laughs> unsealed uh, copy of those cards. Very, very cheap. That was a little fold out there. Yeah, yeah. Good it's little, really cool. Good little booklet. Good fun. How much you pay for this? Uh, five bucks. Nice. Uh, it was. Uh, I, I like collecting game history things, specifically Nintendo history things. Uh, so these little things I, I really enjoy. Uh, and then this one I never knew existed. Uh, luckily, Patreon supporter Michael Towns filled me in on what they were. Oh, yeah. But this here is a little booklet called Saving Private Conquer. Explain. It's for the game Conquer's Bad Fur Day, which you may or may not remember. Yeah, the poo one. Yeah, it's an adult-centric game. It was about a cute little furry character uh, who got drunk and uh, cracked onto flowers with large buds and uh, fight giant poo monsters by throwing toilet rolls at them and uh, fought teddy bears called teddies uh, in a Normandy (laughs) recreation. Uh, so that's where this book takes place. It's a choose-your-own-adventure uh, storybook. Yeah, right. Let me go. So uh, this one here is uh, Conker's kicking the uh, one of the teddies in the uh, stuffing. Here yeah, in the in the ball bag. Uh, and it says here, <clears throat> as you give the teddy a good lamping, it falls to the ground in a crumbly heap. You learn two things. One, the teddy was carrying a sodden great rifle. Never trust t- teddies again. Two, teddies have balls. You steal the teddy's rifle as murderous gunfire opens up in your direction. Do you stay in the trench and wait for the other squirrels to finish this damn war so you can pop out at the end and claim to be a hero? Turn to page nine. Yes. Or make a heroic yet completely pointless run for it. Turn to page four. Which one are we going for? First one. First one, page nine. All right, so we skip to page nine. That's it. We understand how Choose Your Own Adventures work. (laughs) As you hide in the trench, snivelling like the dirty coward that you are, a shadow passes over your face. You look up. You see a bomb. A big one. (laughs) Just about to land in your trench. It does. You blow up. You're dead. Start again. Let me look at it. I want to look. So it is set up like a children's book. It's, it's a, big a children's picture book, on one but page. like he's kicking teddy bears in the uh, in the stuffings that we said. Uh, he's getting blown up. Uh, there's blood here, uh, casings, blood casings. Uh, Where do you reckon that book came from originally? Uh, there's Conker getting blown apart by gunfire. Uh, well, see, this is where Michael Towns came in, and he said uh, they were apparently on the counters at Toy World's where you could buy the game, but because Conker's Bad Fur Day uh, came so late in the Nintendo 64 run, no one was really into it. Um, so I've never seen these before, Yeah. Uh, and I got it for five bucks. Five bucks. And it, yeah, I love it. Yeah, it's awesome. fantastic. And again, it's again, part of that Nintendo history that I just really, really like. I also managed to get a GameCube promo shirt, which nice. is like a baseball top. It's an extra large, so I'm going to have to shrink it because I'm not a large man. Uh, just but- keep it. Yeah. Oh, again, it's that history. It's that background that I really, really love. So if you're out there of any Nintendo history that you don't like, it's not worth much. Just shoot me a line and I'll, I'll, I, I'll I, get it. I always throw my Nintendo history at you. I know. It's great. Dan <laughs> gave me a whole box full of stuff. <laughs> I don't want this awesome. anymore. Here, have my Switch box. Oh, there's something in there. Oh, it's all right. I don't want it. <laughs> uh, so, that, yeah, it was a really good day. I like collecting things. And I like going to those, uh, those swap meets. Oh, should we go on to viewer questions? Yo. Yes. I love, the, I love the viewer questions. my favourite thing in the show. <laughs> All right. Well, here we go. Uh, so we've got three this week. Thank you very much. If you have a viewer question or a question from you who's not a viewer but a listener, head on over to Hack the Dino over on Facebook or Hack the Dino on Instagram. Drop us a line and we may ask your question on the show. Now, it doesn't have to be gaming or comic specific. Uh, oh, we should have done comic news. No. All right, we'll do viewer question, then we'll do a little bit of comic news, then yeah, we'll wrap it up. I don't have any comic news. Well, I do. Oh. <laughs> All right. It'll be too late anyway. No, it won't. We'll be fine. David Payne asks, what's the worst thing you have done for money? Damn. Now, you go first. Well, see, well, I, I, don't, I couldn't think of anything besides, oh, I got paid to scrub a toilet. Did you? Yeah, well, it's part of my job. <laughs> I had to clean the toilet. I'm, I need time to think about this. 
Um, I mean, yeah, I think my my thing is me personally is just like I think just cleaning like scum off of like uh, the street. Stan was a hardened cop. <laughs> no, no, yeah, well, yeah, they no. called him the cleanser. <laughs> me he walked around just blowing them away. Me and the boys down the station. Now, um, <laughs> uh, yeah, just. Getting the scum off of like gross the streets. Mold- when Dan was a hardened cop, <laughs> mouldy uh, like vats when he used to work in a winery. Uh, but I've I've a, I've a, can I talk to someone else? My, my mate's story. Yeah, sure. Yeah, my my mate wants for money. His mate. I, I'm not going to use his name for podcast listeners. I did inverted quotation marks. Yeah, continue. Um, he was young at the time, and he was like. Didn't have any money and his 18th birthday was coming up and he was like... His oh, 80th birthday? 18th. And he was <laughs> like, oh man, how Are you I... a vampire? <laughs> He's like, how am I going to like pay for... Get money to pay for beer so people can drink at my birthday party? And unfortunately he was First hanging out problems. with a bunch of older, very horrible skateboarders. And they're like, well, why don't you eat your own poo? And we'll give you money for that. So a uh, uh, loud motorcycle just went past. Can you, can you just repeat that last sentence? He's like, why don't you eat your own poo? <laughs> and he says, we'll pay you money if you, if you do that. And he's like, nah, nah, I don't want to do that. And they're like, yeah, you should. And he's like, nah. Anyhow, he said no. But these old gnarly dudes just like... Were you one of these old gnarly dudes? No, no. <laughs> told, told everyone he was going to do it. <laughs> and then it got to the point it was so, you know, hyped about that he just had to do it. <laughs> oh, no. So he got, um, he got, he got, uh, he uh, put some plastic over the toilet on the night. A big party, like, you know, came around, like, you know, everyone wanted to see a something. So with uh, this impromptu party just appeared. So he got his plastic on top, did his business onto it, got it, battered it. In oh. breadcrumbs and flour, and then put it on the barbecue, cooked it up, and ate it in bread and sausage. Oh. Uh, his, oh. his own poop. <laughs> oh. um, then he vomited. Yeah, oh. yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> Jesus. Not into it. Oh. Um, yeah, yeah. So, and I filmed it and put it on the internet. And <laughs> <laughs> back in the day, um, I think I took it down just because, like, some things just. Yeah, and and it went and it went it went legendary. Um, got known as, and then he got it known as a poo eater for a while, for yeah, a long time. I, I, but he got how money for paid? his birthday party. How, how much? He got two kegs of beer. Well, how much is that in monetary terms that I can understand? I don't know. Those dudes probably like. I was gonna say they, really they didn't actually beer. give him money. They gave like him like, like well, they said they paid for the kegs, and they did, and and like also and bucks. also a large su- uh, amount of green substances. Uh, broccoli, it. broccoli. You need all the broccoli you like, and then that'll in give South you Australia feces it's, some it's, flavour. It's basically a currency, broccoli. <laughs> that's um, right. So yeah, so that's, we love our broccoli. So my here. story's by my, my um viewer question is by proxy because that's my mate. Um, Oof. Pretty good story though. Oof. Oh my god! You know, I've had a kid and never dry, dry retched like I did just. Should we then. put in the background up the footage? Of no. It? <laughs> Have you still got it? Yeah, no, yeah, I still no. got it. Jesus. But for as little as a dollar a month over on patreon.com backslash hack the dino, you can see that. Fo- no. no you, you can pay us to not put that up. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, we're moving on to the next question. Question two. Question two. Yeah, okay. Uh, Carl, Carl Ballard asks, what were you doing in the summer of 1982, Braden? I wasn't alive. Oh, really? How, would, how long you, away were you, you from being born? You were I doing would. laps in your dad's sack. <laughs> I, oh, I was. Um, <laughs> I would, my dad would have been 12. <laughs> Still doing laps. Wow, really? You Jesus. Were, that's why you came out as such a buff sperm. Yeah. And how, you, how, you old you, how old were you in 1982, Dad? Uh, how old was I in 1982? Four. You were four. Your dad was 12? Yeah. You know, it's not beyond the realm of possibility that you're old enough to be Braden's dad. Yeah. Mm, would, have been a, would have been a very early mistake <laughs> <laughs> in, in my experimental years, <laughs> my, my orange period. But he still <laughs> loves you, Braden. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Dad. Um, yeah, yeah. So I was when I was four. Um, I was in hospital, sick. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> With a kidney disease. Oh, that's wow, right. Wow, yeah. I feel awful no, we've today. Had, we've had that story on Dynamore. Have we? Yeah. yeah. Oh, first I'm mocking a dead girl who died of cancer, and now Jesus. Dan's coming out with the... Oh, yeah, I was in, sick in hospital. Oh. What were you doing, Ben? I was one. I wasn't <laughs> even one. I was pooping my pants and probably eating it as well. 
Yeah, yeah, it's a really weird question. Like, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Appreciate it. I love it. I love it. All right, and last one comes from David Powell, who asks... Powell? Powell. No, Powell. Yeah. If you could combine into a Voltron-type robot, which member of the team would be which body part? You can't say your own. So, Brayden, <laughs> what parts would Dan and I be? Oh, God. Um, Big robot. No, we should do each other. Yeah, we will. We'll, we'll yeah. choose for each other. I, I love the idea of the two of you being perfectly split in half so that if you get into an argument, you just are stuck in the one spot and trying to get away from each well, other. Uh, Pacific Rim. Yes. Because yeah. we're, we're actually inside the robot. Yes. Controlling so you're, you're right next to each other, but you're controlling the left and you're controlling the right. Right. I'd control the right side because I'm always right. But you always sit on the left. I'm always right, okay. Brayden. Okay, yep. yep. Dan. So... Um, so Brayden, yep. What Brayden would probably be the thumb, yep. the thumb, because he can do a thumb, he'd be the thumbs up for the robot. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that's that. it. You're I just like taking that. him out of every kind of. Yeah, fight. I'm thinking. Of, I'm thinking about the kind of robot like the you know the car Voltron that splits into like fifty pieces. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so so like, yeah, no, yeah. You got to think if you want to hold something, you need me. No, if you want to give a thumbs up, you always see Brayden <laughs> like like his shining little face there, just going hey, on the end of his like robot thumb. Okay. And, Where am I? Uh, you're probably like the butt cheek. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Because you're a butt head. <laughs> Almost as good as my pick for you. Yeah, I thought it would be. <laughs> Dan would be the head, but not the head you're thinking of. <laughs> I was, I was going to say you'd be the shaft. <laughs> and I'll be the head. And I'd be every other part. So I'm the robot and Dan's the head. <laughs> Wait up. So you... Your um, your fantasy is that your head looks like my head. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> with that haircut, you're not far off. <laughs> I think. Okay, I comic think news. <laughs> Thank you very much, viewers, for your lovely questions. That you, you cut me off because you knew I could have just drilled you there. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll let that one like, like yeah. go. Well, at least you think that, Dan. Okay, comic news. Um, you have any comic news? I've got a uh, little bits and pieces oh, here, but it's mostly uh, Marvel. News, news flash, every comic thing made into a TV show. <laughs> every comic. I, it's like every creator own comic. I, I, and I keep looking, every comic that's coming out recently, and I'm looking at the write-ups, and it always ends with, now optioned by Sci-Fi Channel for a TV show. Now done with Netflix. Now this, everything's becoming a TV well, show. Well, I know Top Cow have had all their major franchises optioned for years, but uh, it's almost like Hollywood's gone, hey, Infinity War, that was a pretty big movie. What have them comics got? What else have they got? <laughs> well, Image does a lot of like TV stuff coming out because you know it's creator owned stuff. So if you're as a creator, why wouldn't you do that? Yeah, of course. Like, more money for your creation. Deadly Class and like Crowded Came and all out those. Today that Robert Kirkman actually makes more money off the Walking Dead comics than he does off the TV series. But he Damn. still makes money, so it's just it's just bonus money. Yeah. Like, <laughs> he's rolling in it either way. Scrooge. We don't know that. No, he's a hell of a nice guy. No, I mean like just diving in money pits. Yeah, all right. We've Sorry, been Robert. I know you're a, a watcher. Yeah, thanks. Here on Hack the Diner. Thanks for your Patreon support. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Robert Kirkman, for your, the ten dollars a month. <laughs> I'm surprised Braden. Tight bastard. I'm surprised Braden knew who Scrooge McDuck was. <laughs> it's been a remake. I, yeah, well, <laughs> that too. <laughs> what is it? A live action like no. Disney movie? Oh, God, <laughs> no. no. Is it like Howard the Duck? <laughs> I'm trying like, to have sex with David Tennant. Anyway, <laughs> sorry, that was me. Um, <laughs> What, how the duck? <laughs> no, no, yeah. Sex with David Tennant. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> We're just nailing it. <laughs> no, that was me with David Tennant. Um, uh, that DuckTales series, the new one. Ooh. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, is there a new like, DuckTales series? Yeah, a new animated series. David Tennant is Scrooge McDuck. He's uh, excellent. And yeah, it's fantastic. I'm going to get the whole oh, series. Is that what that, yeah. that joke was about? Yeah, I, was like, I, didn't, I didn't get the reference. I thought maybe... Scrooge McDuck was in a Doctor Who episode. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be anyway, amazing. what were we talking about? I don't know. All right, next comics. Comics, 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 right. comics, comics, comics. Yeah, I was just talking about the TV shows of everything. All right, one a TV thing I do show. want to talk about, it's sort of tied into comics, but uh, Into the Spider-Verse comes out soon. They just had the second trailer drop. My God, Yeah, I want to talk amazing. about that as well. Yeah. That so looks good. freaking Perfect. Like Peter Parker is like a, he's what 30, 40 years yeah. old. He's got little bits of grey in his hair. So um, and I reckon that's Toby Maguire's Spider Man. Yeah. Or from yeah. here. Did you well, it's got the stopping the train. It's got the kissing MJ upside down. That's true. It's got the car coming in the restaurant. There's slight little tweaks and variations. Yeah. 
Did you know that at the end of Venom you get 10 minutes of it? Yeah. Damn. After really? the credits. One of the credit scenes. Good. Yeah. Um, it seems weird. It's like, a, it's, it's like, here's this full on hardcore Venom character. Here's, here's a little kid Spider, Spider-Man <laughs> movie. Like, I don't know if it is, but um, I love Miles Morales. Like, he's such a good character. Um, so the fact that it focuses on him and then Peter training him. Yeah. yeah. And then I also really love Spider-Gwen. And she drops in and she's a drummer in the Mary Janes and that's awesome. Then they have Spider-Man Noir in there. Yep. Uh, Played by... Yeah. Nicolas Cage. Really? That's Oof. Nick Cage. Oof. Oh. Oof. And the... Mwah, the, the, the and little... Get away, Nicolas Cage. Get out of my superhero <laughs> stuff. The little pizza of the resistance is... Spider-Ham is oh, in there. What I really so liked about it watching the trailer is that every character is animated in a different style yes. to really to really emphasise the fact that they don't belong in that universe. So, yep. so when I was first watching the trailers, I'm like, oh, it's pretty weird. It's kind of like a stop motion, th- you know, CG. Yeah. And then Gwen Stacy comes in. Gwen Stacy? Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man comes in and she's just perfectly flying animation. And then Spider-Ham comes in and he's 2D animation. Yeah, it's so good. And like Noir Man comes in and no matter what lighting he's in, he's always in black and white, like yeah. darkness. Yeah, like. it's great. And I'm like, oh man, this is... This is this and is, what this I is really chronic. dig is, if you go back and watch it again, watch uh, Wilson Fisk talk. And it's not like the big booming serious voice. He's like, hey, you want to see a hydron collider? God yeah, he's it. like just this dude. That's cool. Like like that. he's not, oh, it's going to be such a good film. I cannot wait for it. Um, the okay. humour was on, on, like, oh, was on was spot perfect. on as well. Fantastic. I was like, oh, this is this is funny. Yeah, like, this is this isn't just like because I'm really sick of those like Batman. You know the DC Batman like the DC cartoons yeah. that are coming yeah. out. They're kind of just not good anymore. Well, I haven't seen the Batman Ninja one. I'm, I'm pretty oh, keen dude, to see it, that. It just doesn't make any sense. It's like right in the end, they just turn into mechs and start fighting. Oh, don't spoil it. I would have flipped out over that. Was, that. that was a really big thing, you know, like months ago. Oh, <laughs> screw you guys. Sorry. All right. Well. Captain Marvel's been relaunched again with Kelly Thompson and uh, Carmen uh, Carnero. Um, Carmen San Diego. Yeah. <laughs> Where is she? Um, so Kelly Thompson, of course, from uh, writer of X-Men, Power Rangers and Captain Marvel previously. And Carmen was the artist for Batman, Supergirl and DC Comics Bombshells. Oh, yeah. So all those really cool bombshell designs. Yeah. She did it. Yeah, they're um, great, aren't So they? that's coming out two months before the film. Uh, and Carol Danvers is back on Earth, obviously, to tie in. But that looks like it's going to be a really sweet comic to pick up. Uh, Age of X-Man is happening. X-Man is such a bad name. X-Man. X-Man. Nate Gray. Do you know who Nate Gray is? No. Nah. So, uh, you know how Cable is the son of Scott Summers and Madeline Pryor, who's a genetic clone of Jean Grey? No. Well, <laughs> he is. He was born here and then he got the techno-organic virus implanted in him by Apocalypse and then was whisked away to the future by the Ascani son and brought up and then he came back. <laughs> <laughs> then he came back as Cable. Yep. Um, and then Nate Gray is uh, uh, Scott Summers and Jean Gray's genetics bred into a vat. <laughs> oh you are a comic book store. I know, but I, don't, I, I hide from this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, now you've got... A young Cable has come back in time, so a younger version of Cable, and killed his older self, and he's running around. Okay. And uh, what are we talking about? (laughs) X-Man. Oh, X-Man. And then you've got X-Man as well, but X-Man now is like a bit older, and he's... Wait, which one's uh, X-Man? X-Man is the clone that um, uh, Mr. Sinister uh, made. Uh, And uh, yeah, he's now like a Jesus figure. (laughs) He's got like a long beard and long hair, and he's like a messiah. So, uh... Praise be to X-Man. There you are. Get into that. Sure. Uh, and... Yeah. Death the video drone. Long live X-Man. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, last one's a bit of a spoiler. Shall I go into it? Mm. It was for a comic that I think came out this week, but it, this is airing a week after. Yeah, 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 yeah fine. So it's all right? Okay. Uh, spoiler for us, but not for you, because you're watching it. Uh, Apocalypse is now a human. Sure, why not? What was he before? He was a mutant. He had complete molecular control of his body. Oh, okay. Which is why he, how he could transfer his consciousness to separate So we separate don't count bodies. mutants as humans? Well, no, they're a different uh, species. That's the whole thing. They're homo superior. That <laughs> 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 face you just pulled was amazing. You should have heard the laugh. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, cool. Oh. Um, 
Apocalypse. He can be whatever. Yep. They, if he wants to be human, let him be. Just be told, if I could pick any superpower, it would be complete molecular control of my body. If I could pick any superpower, it'd be human. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in luck. Yeah. Um, Just. No, I don't reckon I'd do that because you'd be. Doesn't that mean you got that Doctor Manhattan vibe where you're, you're existing in all time periods as well? Yeah, that'd be awesome. No, it'd be horrible. I'd love it. Anyway, we've been hacked the dino. Fortnightly. Uh, what, what do I say? At the now? end. Yeah, fortnightly. <laughs> Talk show, talk about things and stuff. Um, <laughs> come to us for your up at noon fix. Now that that's been uh, put on the shelf, Aww. can we go so ourselves sad. like maybe? A, because we're trying to work out what our show is. It's a we? variety show. I can it's an extreme viewer. Extreme, <laughs> extreme viewer. <laughs> we're a fortnightly variety show focusing on games, comics, and all the really really cool stuff. How about that? That's good. Uh, if you like what you hear with your ears and your eyes, but see with your eyes, not so much hear them unless you've got ears for eyes, in which case you're a freak. Not that I'm freak shaming. Mutants. Yeah. You're a mutant. Don't turn into a human. Uh, head on over to YouTube, which is where you may be watching this, and give us a, a thumbs up, one of these bad boys, and uh, uh, subscribe and tell your friends and, and let everyone know how awesome you are because you watch the thing, which is us being us. <laughs> Uh, or if you're listening to this on the podcast, which has been going really well lately. I'm, I'm very, very impressed with those numbers. Um, Ooh, Nelly. Subscribe on iTunes. Leave us a review. We got another five-star review the other day, which is awesome. Uh, and you can also get us on Google Play, on Stitcher, on Podbean, whatever you listen to. Yeah, everything. We're on there. I, I scroll the internet constantly looking everything. for the next one. Everything. And just put us up there. Uh, or on SoundCloud as well, obviously, which is where we upload these. Uh as I mentioned before, there are new things coming to the channel. There's a short Let's Play thing that I'm going to start playing with in character. Uh, we've got big plans for Hack the Dino More coming up, which you should Ooh, really get on board. so planned. Uh, <laughs> all I'm saying is that $10 a month uh, tier at Patreon, you want to get on board now because it's going to be amazing. Uh, and if you don't have the money, that's okay. Not a problem. You will get uh, Dino More soon. Just a little bit later. Well, yeah. Apart from that, uh, hackthedino.com. I, uh, it's just a, a forwarding spot now for all our stuff. Uh, anything else you want to plug, Dan? We should be called a fortress of awesomeness. That's well, what our show is. That goes without saying. Yeah, true. Look at um, this. This is our turrets. Tar- We've got our ninja Darth Vader here who's a cool guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, I thought it was stronger. That was King Kaiju Collectibles. That wasn't yours. Uh, <laughs> I also got this Goku. <laughs> This Goku was a dollar. He's spirit bombing. <laughs> he's spirit bombing. He's, not, he's been doing it all show and nothing's happened. He's charging <laughs> up. You haven't okay. been lending him your power. No, it's, it's pretty much accurate to an actual episode <laughs> yeah. of Dragon Ball in the early Have years. Have I told the story about how I, won a, oh, I came second in a Kamehameha contest? Yeah. Yes. Oh. <laughs> so many times. Have fun in Japan, Dan. Bye. <laughs> Be sure to watch the videos of me in Japan showing you all the cool stuff. I'm going to go find Ryu.